Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Jack Perkins. This is Tuesday night. Uh, we're coming to you from my home tonight, and we thank God for all of you that tune uh, in to get on with us. We love you and appreciate you, and thank you for your time. We pray that you've been blessed as we come together uh, in uh, Bible study. Truly, God is good to us. We're just thanking God uh, for what he did on Sunday and as we were together together and we were working together to bring forth the word of God. I've gotten uh, reports from people from other places and thank God for that. Just share with you on Sunday. This last week was a year, uh, week where God has just blessed us to be able to uh, uh, appreciate uh, what he is doing. Uh, many things happened that encouraged us last week, and I shared a little bit about what happened last week. It's good to see my sister-in-law, Annie, on, amen, uh, from Alabama. Just a blessing. I'll call your names out as I see them as they come up. But uh, I'm, thank you for Sister Vivian being on. How you doing? Uh, Mother Wyatt is on with us. We've already talked with her. And then we thank God for all of you uh, to, tonight. And then God is good to us. And we've been in Hebrews chapter uh, 12. Hebrews chapter 12. The Lord has been just been blessing us there. Sometimes we have to, sometimes you dwell on things and you just start seeing other things that God began to show me as I look at the Word. Amen. The Word of God. And we probably won't be there all the time, but we're there now. And we thank God for being there. So though you would have uh, your Bible, if you can turn us turn there uh, to that uh, chapter in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter twelve, and and we're going to talk uh, uh, some more about that uh, tonight. I, I was talking uh, yesterday. I was talking on on uh, Sunday about uh, looking at Jesus. So that we can learn, and and uh, truly, I've been in, still in a learning phase, and I thank God that we are still able to learn as we go along this Christian journey. We continue to have to learn different things, so we we're going to just focus on that probably tonight about a thing that we learn, you know, from we, um, we as we go through life. You know, we learn to make adjustments every. Hey, good to see you, Brother Rousseau. Amen. We thank God for you. Uh, good to see you. I pray that God bless you at work. And thank you for tuning in. Um, we're going to just read the scripture. Uh, we know that we are in a race. It says, Wherefore sin we also come past about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debt. Give our debtors, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We pray, God, that you just bless us indeed tonight. Father God, we pray that you'd expand your kingdom and our territory in it. Father, we pray that you'd open up our understanding, our mind, and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us as we go through this lesson tonight. We pray in the name of Jesus that as we look at it, that people would be blessed, encouraged, inspired. And Father God, maybe somebody that might be listening that need to be saved, that would accept you as Lord and Savior. We pray, God, that you heal them and take place in the bodies of those that are, uh, that are uh, on tonight. And we pray, God, for the healing of our nation, the healing of our families, the healing of our children. Father God, we pray right now that we know that things are not normal, but we're learning new things in this process. And we thank you for all that you're doing, we give your name to praise and honor glory for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. 
truly God is good to us, and he's been good to me, thanking him for the word. And this this uh, uh, chapter, chapter 12, uh, talks about that great cloud of witnesses. Uh, Pastor Hooks, I think about him as uh, we were able to uh, uh, be there to witness his homegrown service. And one of the uh, things that was in the letter that we wrote that he has joined that great cloud of witnesses. Good to see Sister LaWanda. Good to see Sister Carolyn Manis. And good to see Brother Cecil on tonight. And we pray, God, that God will bless you as you are here with us. And, and I know you're praying for us. And it's good to have people in your corner, people that we work with. We want to give God... Thanks for all that he's doing. This is a different type of a race now. We we are we're in a in a race um, in this world, and 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 so we are racing against time, and we fighting all kinds of things that's going on. Uh, the coronavirus has you know really come in and taken a lot of uh, uh, time, and you know it's it's really just changed the. Scenario of what we uh, were doing, you know, it it it, it upset. The, somebody said it upset the apple cart. It it uh, it changed the way we do church, and we are trying to learn other things, and we are in the process in a in a learning phase, and you know, so we are going through, and it ex it, it requires patience because it's a paradigm shift from what our normal has been and so we have to get used to a new normal amen and yet at the same time we're trying to uh get to to know uh things they are and then learn some different things so as we look at the text we talked to uh, you know we have to uh we we're running uh, a race and i don't know if any time i was hearing somebody said well see, we have never seen a time like this before Good to see you, Sister Patricia, amen, and others, your name pop up, uh, thank God for all of you, but uh, uh, never seen a time like this, I've never been in church like this, all my life, grew up in church, never saw church the way I see it now, and we have some normalcy, but it's not like having everybody there, and we know that everybody probably shouldn't be there, specifically uh, with the fact that uh, you know, uh, specifically through the fact that, uh, you know, that because of your health condition, and we want you to be safe in what you're doing, yet at the same time, there are others who feel that they can safely come and do social distancing. But I want to let you know we love all of you all and miss all of you, and we feel your presence, even though you're not there, we feel your presence uh, in your love. And we thank you for the love that God has given us you know, and so as we look at the the passage of scripture before us, we understand it's a, a lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So this is a period of time that really requires patience. Uh, I see Brother Sussman said here, a guest that might be coming on tonight, and uh, uh, we want to welcome her if she come on and. And if we see her, I mean, I, I want you all to welcome her too. Her name is Toy Simmons, amen. We pray that all of you are blessed. Good to see Sister Geraldine Hunter <coughs> on tonight. Excuse me. Today I went and took my second shot for the COVID-19 test. I don't have any uh, aftermaths from that, and we thank God for that. And we are in trying to encourage everybody to go and do the best for themselves. And I uh, ask the Lord to help you. I was talking to Pastor Hill today, and he's scheduling his and things of that nature. We want everybody to be safe. and want people to get the help that they need so we can not only just not return to normalcy, but that we would uh, survive this thing. And so uh, by the grace of God, we are still here. And we thank him for that, and we bless God's name for it. But, you know, as we you talk about running with patience, the race that is set before him, looking to Jesus uh, until 
uh, expresses the mental posture that all of us believers should maintain in relation to Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Uh, it's, uh, it's an act that we continue to look at Jesus and look at the Word that will result in us having a holy habit. It becomes a habit for us to, to do things. This become a habit. It becomes a habit that we uh, go before God and start looking to Him. One of the things that I've been doing uh, this this week is when I woke up after preaching and about to uh, go look to Jesus and learn from him, I, I just, I woke up and my spirit was saying uh, to me, um, you know, I, I was wake up and, and it was said like, teach me thy way, O Lord. I, I just, and so the soul and spirit was saying to me, teach me thy way, O Lord. That's, and I wonder. Look it up, it's, uh, it's Psalm 86, Psalm 86 and 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. We always need to be in a state of learning. Uh, there are several things that I, I do. There are several ways that uh, we learn. We learn from life experiences. Many of us learn from life experiences. We learn from others, amen. We we pick up habits from people around us. Uh, we listen to people and we learn other things. We have to ask questions to learn. There's so much stuff to know today. There's so many things that we have to know. And so we, we have, to, uh, have to continue in the learning process. In the 86th uh, division of Psalms, it said, uh, verse 1, we're going to go down to it. Verse 1, it said, Bow down at thine ear, O Lord. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. I need instruction. I need teaching. I need, I need you to help me. Many times we, we pretend like to, we know what we don't know, and we don't know what we don't know. But we do know sometimes there's something we just don't know, and we just have to ask the Lord and what to do at this season time. What, what shall I do now? We was talking in the 20th chapter of Second Chronicles about uh, when uh, Jehoshaphat was, and the nation was surrounded by the enemy. That was basically uh, uh, three separate enemies. That was uh, the people of, of, of Ammon, the people of Moab, and the people of Mount Seir. And they came up against him and he, recognized that he had so many enemies around him that fear gripped him. You know, all of us are gripped by uh, some type of natural fear. There is, uh, we know that God has given us the spirit of fear, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, but there is a fear, a natural fear that comes upon us when we are facing several foes. And I thank the God that we don't have to fight all the foes at once. Good to see my sister Doris on and this is a Marcia on. We thank God for that. But uh, but but in the, we recognize that you know we need God to hear us. I mean, it's it's like in order to learn from the Lord, we need to recognize that we are in the class. We are, we, are, we are before the Lord. We are there before the Lord. And when we are before the Lord, this is what happened to us. You know, it's kind of like when you're in a, in a class with a, uh, the teacher, you know, one of the things that I, I had, uh, was able to do very well in school. Uh, when you when the Lord is with you, you shouldn't fail. I mean, uh, most of my life in, in, in school, especially in high school, I was I was saved. I had the Holy Spirit, and so the Holy Spirit was helping me to bring things to remembrance. So I was studying my lesson, and in the midst of it, I just asked him, well, what, well, what, what is the answer to that question? And he'll bring it back to my mind, what I'd read, because I learned how to, how to, how to read. And so I began to uh, ask him, you know, things. But then while I was in the class, I would raise my hand sometimes to get clarity from the teacher. So as Christians, we need to sometimes raise our voice in prayer. 
This is what David said, bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. I don't know anybody that do not need some instruction. We don't know what, to, you know, people may give us the, say, well, well you know what to do. I, I'm glad I know you because you know what to do. I mean, that's not always true. You don't know what to do at certain point in time. He said in verse 2, preserve my soul. For I am holy. For I am holy. This is what he said, for I am holy. People don't want to say nothing about holy. That holy means that I've been separated unto you. I have been separated. I am holy. I am separated. You have separated me, and I have separated myself. You have sanctified me. You put me apart, and I have separated myself. You've done it, and I have separated my, oh, thou my God, save thy servant that trusts in me. Save, you know, God, he's talking to the Lord. Save thy servant that trusts in thee. Do you know God know who trusts him? And, you know, we sing, oh, I'm so glad. I love it. Do you know that God knows if we trust him or not, that you know, that, you know, and, and it's you know, sometimes when you think about trust, that word trust, uh, that that's that servant that trusted in thee. Now he was saying, my dependency, everything I'm doing, is related to you. So I trust in. Thee. When I can't trust anybody else, I trust in thee. And this, and this uh, uh, pandemic, you know, we we're saying to God, preserve my soul, for for I am set apart. I'm sanctified. I'm set apart. I have set myself apart, and you have separated me for your purpose. O thou my God, save thy servant that trust in thee. I, I do a lot of things that try to help myself, but my trust is in the Lord. Now, I, and, and that doesn't mean that I just let God try to do everything, but what I do is put my trust in God. So I walk in trust, I live in trust, I pray in trust. I just believe that God's going to do things for me. And I mean, this past week and even today, I got to church today and Walked in, I went and got my shot and didn't have to take that long. There wasn't that many people there. Went in, I was in there and out and about, I was in there and got my shot in about 10 minutes and I had to wait another 15 minutes and walked out. I'm, I'm, I'm trusting God with my body. I'm trusting God. Lord, I believe that he, he made everything, uh, you know, good in this season and, and and he made everything for me to enjoy. He made some things for the healing of my body. And I've learned some things lately since I've been at home. I've been learning how to get up. I have a wonderful wife who gets up and prepares food for me. But I, I learned that we have to learn how to do stuff for ourselves. You know, like sometimes it's good for them to know how to cook and iron and things of that nature. But we need to learn things ourselves. When I'm asking God to preserve my soul, I, I, I am your, I, I'm your servant. Save thy servant that trusts in thee. There's nothing wrong with saying, Lord, you're going to have to help me get through this because I'm trying to serve you. I, I'm, the reason why I'm here, the re what I do, I'm trying to, even tonight, as I'm here tonight, I am trying to serve the Lord. At the same time, I'm making a presentation to you. I'm serving and trusting in him. And I believe that while I'm trusting in him, that he's going to bless you. Verse 3, be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. I wake up every day, every day. I, I share with people, I have to pray. You know, I, I have to pray. They, they used to say, well, the preachers don't pray. They said, come. Uh, and they have uh, pastors don't pray with their wives. Or that, that, well, that's not true in this house because I think if we pray together, we'll stay together. Sometimes we pray 
and we, we take it to the Lord in prayer. You know how to take it to the Lord in prayer? We, we pray together and we take each other. We don't take, we go to prayer and re report on uh, Sister Ruby. We go to prayer and, and talk to him <laughs> that save thy servant that trusted in thee. I want to be a, a good man. I mean, I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good father. Uh, and I want to good, be a good brother, a good friend. I want to be uh, a good servant. And I want to be a good pastor. So, uh, and I ask the Lord to save me sometimes, to save me from myself. You know, you know, we, we have a tendency because we don't know ourselves that much. And so we have to save us from ourselves. And one thing I've learned, and I'm sharing this with you, is how to repent. How to repent. How to repent. Lord, the Holy Spirit brings things back up in you and say, well, remember when you preached this sermon about repenting? Yeah. And said, man, you have to repent not only when you get saved, but you have to repent after you get saved. And, and then we have to learn how to practice repenting. Lord, 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 I, I repent. I'm, that wasn't right. I repent. I was listening to someone that said, well, you know, I say stuff and people, I know, people love me and they, ain't gonna t they won't tell you this, but uh, accidentally you hear something and say, well, well, he said something he shouldn't have said. I said, well, maybe I did. I, Lord, I repent. If I said something I shouldn't have said, Lord, I repent of it right now because I did not intend to say something that I should not say because I, I am human. Uh, uh, it's human to make an error. And, and uh, it's divine for us. It, it's the right thing to do when people see you repent and say, well, you know, you, you might be right about that. You might be right about that. But, uh, and if they tell me, I may not see nothing wrong with what I did. May not see nothing wrong with what I said. But sometimes we have to say to God, be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. It's just like sometimes the baby be done made a mess, and we we belong to God. We make our own messes, and we're gonna have to ask the Lord to help us to fix it. Some stuff we make so big of a mess we can't fix it. We can't try to fix it. We make a bigger mess out of it. And sometimes it takes the Word of God. It takes what we know about the Lord. You know, one of the things that helps me is the message I preach every now and then, talking about study to be quiet. Just be quiet at this particular moment because you don't even know what to say. Just be quiet. Rejoice the soul of thy servant. Listen to what he said. It, you know, we, we, we say we rejoice in the Lord. Paul said rejoice in the Lord. Always and again I say rejoice. But this is saying rejoice the soul of thy servant. That means I'm asking God to, to rejoice myself. Make, make me happy. <laughs> you know, rejoice the soul of your servant. You know, sometimes we rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice the soul of thy servant. Servant, rejoice. And sometimes he does things to, to, to make my soul rejoice. I, I, I rejoice that he thought about me. I, I was at church today. I went, to, I told you, I went to, when you got my shot, went to church, and I saw somebody, they were bringing up a, 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 a little plate that had some stuff on it, and they was taking it into the room to pass the hill, and then they looked around, I said, Pastor, would you like a, some lunch? I said, sure. So I went and washed my hands, and Went back in the room and they came back up and they brought me a uh, uh, burners and some uh, turkey and and some cheese and some chips. I said, Lord, I didn't expect this. This is what God does for us to rejoice the soul of us. He does something out of the ordinary, unexpected, and it's good for you. And, and so I was so thankful, and I began to, Lord, I just thank you that I just walked in this door, and I'm not only was it for me, but they were making something for somebody else, and I got a chance to be a part of it. 
because I was there. So I, I was able to eat that and thank God for it. And it was good, too. This is how God does. He, 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 no good thing will he withhold from them that walk his upright. He rejoices the soul of his servant by doing good things for him. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful to know that's what he does? He rejoices the soul of the servant. The, the song said, he has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. You know, we sing that song. He has made me glad. How many, how many say that? He has. Just say that. He has made me glad. You might have been going through a rough period, a rough time, and he's made you glad. I get a phone call this morning. And uh, in in the phone call, I was I was talking to a person, and they was thanking me. You know, like they said, "Well, I, I want to thank you for for all you do," and I'm thank you for answering the phone, and uh, and I, I thank you for 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 all you do and taking time that you wouldn't have to take with me. And I, you know, and, and that just made me happy. One of the things that make you happy when people appreciate what you've done. So if God has made you glad, be an instrument of gladness for other people. Don't always be the negative person. Don't always be the person that come out of uh, uh, left field. They need somebody to come in after they've heard all the bad news. Here's some good news. God, I, God, I got some good news. I got some good news or something. I thank God that he made me glad. I mean, he, uh, he rejoices the soul of his servant, and he has made me glad. And it says, it says, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. I just start praising him, lifting him up. Lift up the name of Jesus. Thank God for what he's done for you. As you get in a period of rejoicing and thanking God. Lord, I just, just thank you for the wonderful thing that you're doing for me and my life, I'm I'm continuing to learn. I'm continuing to grow, and and this 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 scripture here, he rejoices my soul. I mean, he satisfies my soul. That we sing that song, we he satisfies my soul. I mean, we we start thinking about it and start saying it. When I said it, I felt something. I don't know what you felt, but I felt something. I'm trying to stay calm. But I thank God he rejoices the soul of his servant. He lets you know that you, he ain't going to wait until the end is over. He lets you see results right now. God allows us to see results right now so we can rejoice. I, I thank God. I see my, my sister Doris uh, on, on there, and I see all Marla and, and, and satisfies my soul. Amen. I, you know what I'm talking about. Y'all, somebody out there know what I'm talking about. What he does, uh, I, I think about when I think back and I think back with my family, especially my family member. When we go back and remember them, them those days, long time ago, and, and now to see us all in a different place, and we began to rejoice and said, "Look where he brought me from." I lift my up my soul. I open my mouth. I clap my hand. I stomp my feet. I get excited about what God has done. I mean, He's he he been it's truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Where He brought me from, I thank God. What He brought me through, the bridges He brought me over, Amen. The storms He allowed me to to survive. Verse five: For Thou, Lord are good and ready to forgive, right? You're good, you're ready to forgive. If I ask you, I thank God. Everybody's not ready to forgive. I mean, God, he said, for thou, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Everybody's not ready to forgive. That's what make God so marvelous. That's what makes it so wonderful because he's always, ready to forgive. And all of us have sinned and come short of glory, God. We missed the mark, but God is ready 
to forgive. We have to ask them to forgive us. Father, forgive me. I mean, I don't go around practicing doing wrong just to be doing it so he can forgive me, but I thank him for that he's ready to forgive. He's plenteous in mercy unto all that call upon thee. You plenteous in mercy. Thank God the mercy of God. I mean, I, I think it says, I, Paul said, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that the basis, the reason why I asked you to do this is because of the mercies of God, because God has been merciful, and I thank God for being merciful to me. God has been so merciful. The thing that he, uh, that, that he allowed me to, to get through, he said, please in mercy, to all them that call upon me. First of all, he asked the first, he asked for the attention. Can I get your attention? And I thank God, you know, thinking about all he has to do, all what everything he has to take care of, and he'll pay attention to me. Verse 6, give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. Give ye, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplication. Give ye, O Lord, to my, my prayer. And, and I pray when I pray, when Jesus says, pray, you know, and he tell me to pray, and I tell, tell you that I've been enjoying just praying what people call the Lord's Prayer, but it's our prayer that we need to that 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 we pray and the blessing for me is when I hear others pray, we can pray together. We pray in agreement. Thank God that we are in agreement in the house that we can pray this prayer together today. And and so we we begin to pray unto God uh, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble I will call upon thee for thou wilt answer me in the day of my trouble. I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. I love that, 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 that portion. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. There are times, we every day is not the same. In the day of my trouble, and he's already saying, what is he going to do in the day of my trouble? Whenever trouble comes, I will call upon thee, for thou will answer me. What would good it would be for you to call on the Lord and you didn't know or believe that he was going to answer you? When I pray, I believe that God's going to answer me in the day of trouble. I've been through trouble. I've had trouble, all kinds of trouble at different times. You know, I've had call, but in the day of trouble, if you make up your mind, in the day of my trouble, I will call on the Lord. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. That's faith. Thou wilt answer me. You know, I prayed, and I, I know he's going to answer because in the day of my trouble, because I'm his servant, and he's merciful. He forgive me in the day of my trouble. Now, if I have a day of trouble, and all of them may have a day of trouble, it's a day... Uh, trouble is a day that, that we, we need to learn why, first of all, why do I have this trouble? Why, why, why did this come to me? What am I going to learn from the trouble that I have? What, what am I going to learn from this? What, what, what lessons am I learning? What, what, what benefit am I going to get from this? What can I share with others about what I learned in the day of my trouble? I don't care how good life is. There's always going to be a day of trouble. You may not tell nobody about your trouble, but all of us, if you live in this world, you're going to run into a place where you're going to have trouble. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, and thou will answer me. That's faith. Thou will answer I, I was sharing, we have to learn how to run this race with patience. That means wait until God answers. Wait until I know he's going to answer. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou will answer me. I have to wait 
until I tell you answers. In my day of my trouble, I think about people that like Job in the day of his trouble. I mean, uh, the people around him looked at his trouble. Uh, they 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 assumed because he was in trouble that maybe he did something to cause the trouble. But I want to tell you this. Uh, you don't have to do anything to cause trouble because we live in a fallen world and, and this world is full of trouble and you can have some trouble. You can run in trouble with people. You can run in trouble with your family, run in trouble with your finances, or trouble with in the day of my trouble. Whenever it happened, however it happened, why it happened, I don't know why some trouble come. I don't know why I got that trouble. You know, sometimes... We, we think we are immune to trouble. You know, that sometimes we can be saved so long and we, we get this false faith and believe that nothing bad is going to happen to me. This is not the, the writer here. He said, in the day of my trouble, I'll call upon you and you will answer me. I'm going to wait until you answer. Uh, Job said, all my appointed time, I don't know why this happening, y'all got it wrong. You don't understand. You don't know me that like that. But but to, in the day of my trouble, the Lord will, I'm going to call on him, and he will answer me. I don't think he leaves us hanging. I, I love God. He does not keep us hanging. God answers. I, I thank God that in the day of trouble, if he don't answer, you know, I, when somebody said, Jesus on the main line, call him up. And he's not a person that will, will lie, neither will he say, well, okay, I ain't going to answer you. I'm not going to answer you. Wouldn't it be sad if God never answered? Verse 8, upon the God, there are none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like Unto thy work. Among the God, there is none like unto thee. I was just singing this day, so there is none like you. You know, I, there is nobody like you. There is none like you. <clears throat> nobody work like you do. You know, we sing that song. Nobody works like you did. Nobody can do me like you do me. Verse 9, all nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and does wondrous things. Thou art God alone. When you start praising God, all nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and does wonderful things, thou art God alone. Sometimes when people start talking about, well, they got other teaching, they got other gods. And after he says all of that, in verse 11, he says, Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Teach me me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. The difference between God's truth and our truth, you know, we all got our own set of rules. We got our own truth. But he said, teach me thy way, O Lord. That the Bible said that the way that seem right unto man, but the way thereof is death. You know, we, 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 uh, we find stuff that we think our way is right. Sometimes when, the, when, when God teaches his way, then we find out our way of thinking, our way of doing things, our way of seeing things, it may be all wrong. That's why we need to ask the Lord to teach us his way. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. That means that if you show me something different from the way I'm doing, if you show me something different 
and the way I'm thinking. Lord, when I'm thinking, teach me thy way, O oh Lord. When, when, I, when I'm talking, teach me thy way, O oh Lord. When I'm responding, teach me thy way, O oh Lord. Lord, I want to learn from you. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon thee and learn of me. The only way that we're going to be know the way of God, we have to take the yoke. What is the yoke? The yoke is the word of God. This is the thing that God uses to guide us. Allow it. The yoke and the, and, uh, and the oxen, when the yoke of oxen, when the ox, the yoke is on the oxen, the, the yoke can turn the head of the ox so that the ox would go the way it's supposed to go. So he, what he's saying is, Lord, I want you to take my word and I want you to teach me thy way. There was a way that seemed uh, every man's way is right in his own eyes. What, I, what I'm doing is right based on what I think. But thy way, God's way, is always right. Jesus said, I'm the way, he the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by him. That's why we have to keep our eyes on Jesus because our way is not his way. Neither our thoughts, his thoughts. That's what it tells us uh, in the book of Isaiah 51st chapter that his, our thoughts are not his thoughts, neither our ways his way. As far as the heaven is above earth, so far as his ways above our ways and our thoughts and our action, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Our thoughts are the thoughts of men. Our thoughts are thoughts based on how we've been shaped. Our thoughts are thoughts that based on what people have told us. Our thought is based on what we have thought about what we thought about, what people said. And our thoughts are not always right. So that's why the writer said, purge me. That's why David said, purge me. Because I don't believe, sometimes we are easy on ourselves because our way may not always be the right way. Teach me thy way, O Lord and I will walk in thy truth. The Bible said, if you see the light, if God show you something, if he show you something in, in, you know, he, in his teaching process, don't get stuck in a mold and say, this is the way I am. The, Lord said, teach, the writer said, teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. I'm not walking in the truth as I see it, as somebody else told me, but there are things that God teaches us when he teaches his way, he'll say, no, no, that's not my way. That's not, that's not the way I want you to do it. Well, this is the way I know to do it, but that's not the way I want you to do it. That's not the way of truth. That's your truth. There's the truth of the world. There is our truth and the truth of God. Is that there, there's our truth. There's the truth of the world and the truth of God. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. There are some things, there are some ways, and there is some truth that's in the world that's not the truth of the world. That's a truth in the, in, in the world. To, to the world, it's their truth that, that you can do whatever you want. In order for us to get along, then we have to that just accept the lifestyle, the characteristic of everybody. And if we do that, we feel like that's the truth, that, that all of us in America, where well, you got a right to do this, you got the right to do that. And if we, if we vote together and we said that this is the truth, that the way we want to live by, then that's how we live by it. Because in, in some cases, the truth of God and the truth of the world come in conflict. The truth of God tells us one thing and the truth of man tells us something else. Well, you can do that. You, you got a right to do that. It's okay for you to do that. That's your truth. It's teach me thy way. Oh, okay, you okay? No, that's the way you say I'm okay. But if the Lord say I'm not okay, then I'm not okay. Teach me thy, thy way, O oh Lord. 
What am I supposed to do? We the, we, the, we got our own truth about ourselves and truth about everything else. We got truth about ourselves and we got truth about others. And some of us got truth that the truth that people have, they believe about themselves. I'm superior to you. I'm smarter than you. And so, so I, I'm better than you and stuff like that. That's a false truth. It may not even be true at all. It might be a temporary truth, but it's not a permanent truth. It's not a truth that's going to stand the test of time. The people that's high and mighty today and look down their nose at other folks and say, well, look at what you got. Look what I got. So I must be better than you because this is what I... No, you have received the mercy and the blessings of God, but you don't know what tomorrow is going to be. And so you have to understand that because it seemed right to you, it could be the way of death. There's a way that seemed right unto man, but the way thereof is the way of death. I was looking in, in Luke and tell the story about the rich man and Lazarus. According to some of the people that preach today and teach today, the rich man was probably blessed. And Lazarus was a poor beggar. He was sitting there at, at, at the gate waiting to get the crown to come along. And so the person that rode by, he fast something every day. He had on his robe. He looked it good. He was riding at, riding high and something. It's nothing wrong with that, but it's the way you think about that that will mess us up. It's a temporary truth. It's a temporary way. You may have it today, tomorrow be gone. You may be on top of the world, and tomorrow you'll be at the bottom of the heap. Men rise and men fall. People have come and people have gone. Names have, have got up high and then they've fallen low. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. So he was saying, he doesn't say, well, teach me the way of the Gentiles. Teach me the way of the Jews. Teach me the way. I'm trying to learn the habits of the, uh, of the people in Paris. And I'm trying to learn the, the way of the, the way of the world. And so somebody said, well, the, the way of the world, the way, the, 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 the way that the world sees things. And, the, you know, it's, the, it's contrary to the truth. Teach me thy way, O Lord. And there are people that be trying, oh, wait, wait a minute. This is, you know, it ain't no harm in doing that. There's nothing wrong with this. God told Adam and Eve what to do. He put them in a beautiful garden and said, you can eat of every tree in the garden, but this one tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and it's amazing that the person was drawn to what they couldn't have. And didn't, didn't get a chance to enjoy what they did have. The devil always tell you what you don't have and making you think that this is the, the truth that God had given them that the day you eat of it, you're going to die. There are other folks who said, like the devil. Devil ain't in the beast no more. He might not in the but he's in people. If, no, I, you all right. You all right. Uh, you, you, you ain't gonna, nothing gonna happen to you. See, because you good. Jesus came along and said, "That's none good but the Father." I mean, there is in this world there is a way. When Jesus came, you know, he had a way of doing things. See, the problem is that when you set up your own way, when the real truth come and the real way come we can't see it i i've been doing this so I, this is the way i've been this is the way i do it this is the way i pray this this is the way i i give this is the way i live this this is what this is the way i do it this is the way i see it this is the way i hear it this is the way i know it and we keep going and that way and we have to come to god said teach me Thy way. I know my way. I know the way I see it. I know the way I hear it. I know the way I do it. But teach me thy way. This is a good point in time in this Bible study. We need to ask God this. We got ways. We got we we got multitude of people. This is the way I do it. This is the way I see it. This is the way I understand it. This is the way I heard it. This is the way I, I you know, I, this, I do it this way. And they're trying to convince you to do it their way. 
And the writer here is saying, Lord, teach me thy way. We think that the way we doing it is the right way. When it comes to, 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 to giving it, uh, this is the way I do it. That when it comes to singing, that serving, this is the way I, this is the way I, when it comes to raising the children, this is the way I do it. Uh, when, relating to you, this is the way I do it. This is the way I do it. At some point in time, we have to come to the point and say, God, teach me thy way. Maybe we're not doing it right. Maybe, maybe the way your mama taught you how to do it wasn't, I ain't got nothing against your mother. Maybe that's not the way it's supposed to be done. That's the way you was taught. You know, that's why sometimes this is what I wear. You know, people go to church. This is what this this, this is what I do. This 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 is the way I do it. I was talking to a mother once and we were talking about some people that was uh, a person was asking me about coming to church. And they called me and asked me, could they want to come to church and be part of the church and and the pastor it get cold. I'm cold natured and I wear pants. Can I come to church with the pants? And uh, I said, yes, yes. And I was sharing with someone. I said, well, uh, uh, I share what what share with somebody what 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 was told to me. It's a pastor. I said, yeah. Uh, what I do is I get these thick thick leggings. And, and, and that's what I do. Tell them they can still wear. I said, I said, Mother, they didn't ask me about no leggings. They asked me could they come to church and, and wear their pants at church. And I told them to come on. Because the Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. They want to come, let them come. Now, if the Holy Ghost wants to get them to wear some leggings, that'd be between them and the Holy Ghost because I can't be telling them everything. I just need them to come so they can get the word. And, you know, so he hasn't given me no revelation about that because back in the Old Testament, uh, the men, Jesus wore a robe. And, and, and I don't wear a robe all the time. I mean, it, so people say, well, sometimes you come to church now when I preach, People say, Pastor, you going to put a robe on? Well, the robes are, are fine. I have nothing against a robe, but the robe itself is not going to save me. The dress itself ain't going to save me. Men dress up the outward part, but God looks at the heart of the person. If God changes us, let him change it from the inside out. And, and so I see some older saints they they come to church and, and you know and I know this is this bothers some folks because some of the stuff that is still bothers me that uh, that was put into me it was a way of the church that I came out of it had nothing to do with the truth of God for I'm going it's my personal preference you know I'll be telling people you know I I I don't tell other ladies this I tell tell my wife I have a personal preference. But then uh, in the midst of that, my personal preference, she has a uh, thing that she want to do. So if we're going to walk in love, I have to let her walk in free. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. I will walk in thy truth. That means when you show me different, I'm going to walk differently. So many times people are, are bound up. And there's no truth in it. It ain't going to make you no more saver by you doing that. Now, you may feel saver because you don't do it. And I know my you know, I, I, I can't do that. I, I remember one time a, a person, I saw a man, he was, he went, he had a great church and was growing. And all of a sudden, he decided one time, he had some mint green uh, shorts on, on his way to church. And went to church and, and he preached to them. After a while, because of the ways of other people, that's not the way I think I should worship. And so I know people have different preferences. But let people have, have their freedom 
and, and the people that like that shouldn't be in control. You know, people, well, I, I saw him, I, I saw him, so therefore, you know, I'm not coming to church in no dress, amen? Because <laughs> that's not the way I do it. You know, I, I do things differently. There are, they have different styles, that, but there's a way. I mean, John the Baptist would probably have a problem with some of these places. He ate locusts and wild honey, and he, he had a different kind of dress. I mean, and so, and that's how they saw him. He was a prophet. He was out there. The differences in people, I mean, but that, he, but he was teaching people the way to God. It's amazing who God can use to reach other people. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. One day I was, uh, I was in church, and I used to preach about, I used to preach about uh, pe men wearing earrings. I had a personal, I had a personal prejudice against men wearing earrings. And then I, I went to a place, and there was a, there was some men. They were singing in a choir. They came down from another church, they had a big church, and the guy was up there directing the choir, he had a ring, earring in his ear, and he was directing that choir and things of that nature, and, man, and uh, they, they were having a wonderful time, and I began to say, hmm, but, but what happened to me is God didn't tell me to preach about men wearing earrings, part of people's culture, in different cultures, that's what they do. And it cannot be a condition of salvation based on what they do in that place. I think over in one place, uh, they wear skirts. I, I was watching one of those pictures, and I forgot where they were from, but but they, the men wear this, the, the, I think it's in Sweden somewhere, they wear the skirts, and they have the, their skirts when they walk out, the lady got a skirt on, but his was a man's skirt. <laughs> and I told you that, that I wouldn't do that. But teach me thy way, O Lord. The way of God is always the way of love. He looks beyond what we see and see the need. Do we see the needs of people? Unite my heart to fear Thy name, united. Just, just connect my heart to fear that, that that my whole heart and everything I do is to fear the name of the Lord. Teach me thy way, the way of love, the way of peace, the way of joy, the way of service. I pray you got something out of this uh, tonight. Is God's readiness to forgive us, his, his, his mercy. I thank God for that he can teach us. Verse 12, I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify thy name forever. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen up against me. And the similar of the violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. But thou, o Lord, art God full of compassion, gracious, long suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. O oh, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it and be ashamed, because thou, Lord, hast hoped me and comforted me. What a wonderful prayer. What a wonderful search, asking God to teach us his way. I pray that you receive something tonight. Go back and read the scripture yourself. I pray that. Uh, as we share tonight, uh, that you've been blessed. I, I pray that the perfect love of God that has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost will continue to strengthen you. And if by chance there's a person here tonight that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, 
I want you to know that Christ died for you. And he died for me. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting. God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If you tonight and you want to be saved, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would open up, he would come in and he would sup with you and you can sup with him. God is a gracious, loving, caring, wonderful, plenteous in mercy, forgiving God that will forgive you. The purpose for Jesus coming was to save us from a sin. And we, as we are before him, he will teach you, he'll take you and save you all that sin and come short of the glory of God. Mr. Mark, but I thank God that he's a forgiving God. He's a loving God. If you come to him, he will in no wise cast you out. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, why don't you just open up? This is the greatest part of this service uh, and this prayer meeting tonight. As we study the word tonight together, is that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ himself. And I pray that God would be in your life as a strong and mighty God, that you get to know him, that you wake up every day with the awareness of his presence in your life and that he lead and guide you all through the day and you cry out to him, Lord, teach me thy way. Teach me thy way, Lord. Teach me thy way. Help me to live through the day. Teach me the way I should go. Teach me what I should say, what I should do. If you do that tonight, if you ask Jesus, the Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin. I repent of him. I, I know I've done some things wrong, but I thank you for loving me. I thank you for caring for me. I pray that you would just uh, bless me tonight and come into my heart. If you pray that prayer, why don't you pray with me tonight? Father, I recognize that I've sinned and come short of your glory. I never invited you in to be Lord of my life. Tonight, I invite you to come in, to be Lord of my life. If you repeat that prayer with me, today you're saved. Just keep tuning in. Tell somebody about Jesus. We thank God for all of you. We thank God for all the people that are listening. And I want to ask you to join us uh, in a Zoom call tonight. We'll be on uh, at about 6.30, and the Zoom call number is 566. 581-1939, 566-581-1939. You get a chance to interact with us. You get a chance to pray with us. You get a chance to, I get a chance to hear from you. Uh, and if you would join in, please, you, you don't have to stay on. Some people come on, they have to go do some other thing. I know you've been here for a while, but every now and then you may want to see some of the other people that, that you're worshiping with even tonight. Uh, the uh, password for that is zero, like in the number zero, M-D-R-Z-W, zero, M-D-R-Z, small w, zero, M-D-R-Z, uh, small w. God bless you. I love you. I'll see many of you next week, uh, this this coming Sunday on Facebook Live. Tell somebody else about it. Uh, invite them to come on. We, we want to share with people the word. We love people. We love you. We want you to be saved. We want you to be blessed. And I pray that God will bless you tonight. Father, just bless my audience tonight. Minister to them. Meet their needs. Whatever their needs are, we pray, God, that this word has ministered to them as we shed it tonight. Have your way. Father God, we pray in Jesus' name. Until next time, help them all to be safe. Keep them sound. Heal the afflicted. Lift up the downtrodden hearts. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you. See you in a few minutes.